11. But a scare for the Gators. Florida is a great kickoff return team, so Georgia counters that kickoff return with a little squib kick. Oftentimes, those players that are in the wall aren't really good with their hands. That particular case was an example. The ball bounced free. Florida very fortunate to get it back. And much better field position for the Gators' second possession and a handoff to Bo Carroll. He's a track All-American with tremendous speed. And that's a gain of 10, very close to a first down at the 47-yard line. Here's the Georgia defense, Paul Snelling, Travis Stroud, Derek Bird, and Antonio Cochran up front. The linebackers are Brandon Talbert, Greg Bright, and Arondis Grant. And in the secondary, Champ Bailey will be running with Jaquez Green most of the day. Glenn Ford, Kirby Smart, and Ronald Bailey. Champ's older brother, Joe Kynes, whom you saw a moment ago, the Georgia defensive coordinator. It was a gain of nine for Carroll. And now Taylor pulls forward for the first down, tackled by Paul Snelling. You know, we're seeing a different Florida team, and, and the reason is is because of the inexperience at quarterback. Florida is going to play somewhat conservatively for them. They're going to try to get the running game going with Taylor and Carroll. They've got two outstanding tailbacks. They'll throw the ball with Johnson. He's going to air it out, but it's not the same style of attack, play in and play out, and, and wisely so. You've got a great defense. You want to play some conservative football at times. Out of the shotgun on first down, down the middle, and incomplete. The man was open, but the pass from Doug Johnson a bit too long for Jamie Richardson at about the 22-yard line. Florida has dominated its opponents this season in the first quarter with the Georgia touchdown. It's still 108 to 31 in favor of Florida against their foes this year. But Joe at the edge at every quarter, but particularly in the first. But Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator in Florida, was talking to us this week, and he said, if I can just get my defense off to a decent start, come out of the gate fast, get some confidence as the game goes along, we have a lot better chance to play. Second and ten, the pass caught by Richardson. He's short of a first down at the 44-yard line. I meant Joe. About two and a half yards shy of the first down, tackled by Greg Bright and Jeff Harris. Joe Kynes of Georgia, the defensive coordinator. That's who I was referring to right there. He's done a great job with this defense. Last week, the Georgia defense held Kentucky to a season low 13 points, even though the Wildcats moved the ball up and down the field. It was the ultimate bend but don't break defensive performance by Georgia. Third down and three, the handoff to Taylor, and he has the first down, down to the 41. Gained the first down by about a yard, Arontis Grant tripped him up. This is a little counter play that Florida runs. Ryan Kalich, 51, he's the lead blocker, the left guard. He's going to be the guy who pulls right there. You can follow him, and then they give the ball to the leading rusher in the, in the conference, Fred Taylor. He's a powerful back. The guy can make yards. He has outstanding vision and cutting ability. Back to the pass on first and ten. That is thrown up for grabs and intercepted. No receiver in the area. It's Champ Bailey out of bounds for Georgia at the 26-yard line. Reminiscent of the LSU game, that throw by Doug Johnson. And everything is going Georgia's way early in Jacksonville. There's real outstanding pressure put on by the Georgia front. The defensive tackle, number 94, Leroy, he gets the pressure on Johnson. Johnson unloads the ball, and as you mentioned, Sean, there isn't a receiver within 20 yards of that. It's just a busted play. Third interception of the season for Champ Bailey, the sophomore from Folkston, Georgia. A company most people never heard of is changing the way we fight cancer and kidney failure by inducing the body to produce blood cells. Chemotherapy and anemia patients are gaining new strength. Helping to grow blood cells helps Amgen become the world's largest biotech company. Where do you learn about companies with such pioneering spirit? Exactly. Nasdaq.com you know when you're <laughs> coughing and your headaches, every mattress says, lie down, rest. But the boss says, hustle, sale starts in 10 minutes. Yeah, sir. Sure. That does nothing for cost. My motto is, night will for night, day will for day. 
I'll share with you. I'll be fine. If you love the complete relief of NyQuil, you'll love its non-drowsy daytime version called DayQuil. <coughs> I was willing to share. Vicks DayQuil, the non-drowsy, stuffy head, sore throat, coughing fever so you can get through your day medicine. There are millions of reasons to fly today. Only one that matters to you. At Delta Airlines, it is our pleasure to get you to the place you want to be. Delta Airlines, on top of the world. A NASCAR doubleheader. First, the Grand Nationals go for it at their grand finale. Then, the Super Truckers settle it at their season-ending showdown. Next Sunday on CBS. Altel Stadium in Jacksonville, formerly the Gator Bowl. Spectacular setting, a neutral site in this rivalry. The tickets evenly divided. And George has the ball first and ten at its own 27 after the interception by Bailey. Bobo sidestepped the rush, but they got him from behind. That's the first Florida sack. The ball came out, but Bobo was ruled down. Willie Cohens took Bobo to the turf. Tim Beauchamp, the defensive end, 93. He's the man that applies the pressure. But Mike Bobo does a good job here. Yes, he takes a sack, but what he doesn't do, he doesn't panic in the pocket. He pulls the ball down. He lives to fight another play. I think that's outstanding play by a quarterback against a top-ranked defense like Florida has. They average five sacks per game on pace for the conference record. Bobo caught. First down, Tony Small. Out to the 39-yard line goes the Jacksonville native with his first reception of the game. Let's go to New York, and here's Jim Nance. All right, fellas, is this the second-best team in the country? Last outing, Penn State nipped Minnesota by one today against Northwestern. And just a moment ago, the Wildcats scored in the final half minute. Brian knew so, but they failed to recover the onside kick. Nittany Lions stay unbeaten with a three-point victory. Next week, it's Michigan. Let's go back to Sean and Terry. Thank you, Jim. A win for Penn State, but perhaps, again, not convincing enough as those teams jockey for position atop the polls. I would say that's a marginal win in terms of how the pollsters vote. Mm -hmm. For a coach, there is no marginal <laughs> win. Joe Paterno's got to be happy with the victory. After the 18-yard gain of the pass play to Small, Georgia goes back to the run with Patrick Pass. Pass running out of bounds at the 49, close to another first down, shoved out by Mike Harris. Jim Donnan, the head coach of Georgia, who serves as his own offensive coordinator, he told us this week that he was going to run plays that attack the Florida defense quickly. Try not to run sideways a whole lot. Go right at them. This is a little lead draw that slices right into the defense fast. As a, resort, as, as a result of that, you have positive yardage up the field. Hines Ward trying to get off coverage. He's having a real battle with Tony George. Guys wonder about wide receivers and DBs. That's what happens on a run and play. Second and one, Edwards dances for the first down as he moved across midfield and went down to the 49-yard line. Edwards coming off the biggest game of his career, 186 yards and two long touchdown runs last week against Kentucky. They're a different team, Sean, with Robert Edwards being able to rush the ball like he's capable of. It gives them real balance. It gives them the fact they can run and throw. It really is much more difficult on a defense. Injured Gator is Dwayne Thomas. Florida already with a problem at linebacker today with the illness to Johnny Rutledge, who, as Michelle told you, has had a tough time bouncing back from food poisoning earlier in the week, and now it's Thomas being assisted by the Florida medical staff. Wayne's the middle linebacker, senior, another Jacksonville native playing in his hometown today, the first member of his family to go to college. And that's good to see. He's up on his feet, trotting off. As good a team as Florida is, they can ill afford to continue to lose starters in their defensive unit. You've got to have your best players on the field if you're going to play their best. And Florida has a fired-up Georgia team on their hands right now. Mike Peterson, another starting linebacker, is also on the bench right now for Florida. Hines Ward 
Back at quarterback, he pitches it to Champ Bailey, a two-way player for Georgia, and that razzle-dazzle didn't yield much. Perhaps two yards, maybe a yard and a half before Tony George knocked Champ Bailey out of bounds. So Tony George made a great play. He went all the way across the field, and he was, he was covering Champ Bailey man-to-man, -man, which, as a coach, you tell him, you take him anywhere he goes. As the a, as a reverse starts to form, Tony George comes all the way over across the field. That's a marvelous play by a strong safety athlete. He's a junior from Cincinnati. Bailey, the first two-way player at Georgia since James Warner back in 1991. Warner played tight end and linebacker in a game against Kentucky. Bobo going deep, and it is intercepted. Elijah Williams with his first of the season. And he runs it back to the 40-yard line. Bobo has thrown two interceptions all season. He's thrown two in the first quarter today. Georgia had hurt Florida earlier in the game with a post. Heinz Ward is going to run down the field and then break inside to the post. Elijah Williams plays perfect underneath technique. He had help over the top. He could go underneath to make that interception. That's a great play by one of the real outstanding players at Georgia. You're looking at an offensive player converted to defense just in spring practice. It goes back to the comment that we were making at the beginning of the telecast. Jim Donna saying Bobo had to be very accurate today because the receivers won't have much breathing room. With some room, Jacquez Green, he has a first down into Georgia territory at the 42-yard line, an 18-yard gain for the junior, a Georgia native playing for Florida. Jacquez Green is one of the guys, when you're playing against Florida, you better keep track of. He's dangerous from all over the field. He runs an inside route. The ball's behind him. He makes a very athletic move to adjust. First down for the Gators. 7-0 Georgia. Five and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Middle screen thrown by Johnson, and that is dropped for a loss. Fred Taylor tackled by Antonio Cochran back at the 43-yard line. Two weeks ago against Auburn, we saw the versatility of Jock West Green. He threw a touchdown pass to Jamie Richardson in the first quarter. In the third quarter, he caught a touchdown pass. And then on the reverse, in the fourth quarter, a five-yard run. Other than that, he didn't do much against the Tigers. Well, Steve Spurrier told us this week he's not pleased with his route running. He's been a little sloppy in that area. Johnson on target for a short gain to the 37-yard line. Rod Frazier, the fullback, out of the backfield for just his seventh catch of the year. Jeff Harris made the tackle. Sean, when you're on the sideline in a big game like this is, Florida, Georgia, you always try to get a sense of how the other team is playing. As I watch Georgia play right now, they're playing with an extra step of quickness. They're breaking on the ball. They're rallying to ball carriers. They're very, very aggressive. Steve Spurrier has a fired-up Georgia team on his hands. Out of the shotgun, Johnson after a pump fake throws. Green has the first down. Down to the 26-yard line. Arantis Grant made the tackle. Alente Grant makes the stop. Gain of 11 on the play. Green, as we mentioned, a Georgia native. Third in the NCAA with nine touchdown receptions this season. He's from Fort Valley, Georgia. Town of about 8,000 in southern Georgia. But everybody around him growing up was a Georgia fan. But said he didn't want to go to a school where they lost three or four games a year. He's such a smooth athlete, watching him run and cut. Johnson changed the play. There's Green again. Tackled around the ankle by Champ Bailey. And they're inside the 20, and on the move are the Gators with second down and short at the 18. Jacquez Green came into this game with 43 receptions. The next Florida receiver, Jamie